And I'm not going to say that it's got sports car handling. It does not. It, it comes nowhere near that. Welcome to Car Coach Reports. This is his turn, her turn, and I am Lauren Fix with the humble. I feel Auburn. like uh, Todd the tennis pro today. <laughs> Anyway, we're here to drive the 2019 Ford Ranger. There's been a lot of excitement about the Ranger and everyone's speculating the Bronco is coming. We're hearing they got to get the Ranger out first. I think that the competition for this is far more the Tacoma mm -hmm. than it is the Colorado. But it is a big truck and you look at the Ranger and we're looking at the two different versions. There's a Chrome and there's a Sport and then you can pick your trim levels within yeah. that. And we'll talk about that later, so stay with us. We have an internal expert who's gonna tell us all the differences because there's a lot of trim packages. So why don't we individually and collectively, but not at the same time, drive the new Ford Ranger and- All right, you're first. Okay. All right. Let's go. I think one of the, the biggest things that we, we find in trucks today that is true almost universally now and was almost universally uh, not true in the past was the comfort level of you know the, the interior package we're looking at a truck here where it's incredibly comfortable to drive and I'm not gonna say that it's got sports car handling it does not it, it comes nowhere near that one of the things that we gig Silverado on was the size of the screen, which was about the size of an iPhone 6. But this is a nice size. I like this size for this vehicle. And it's got the top of the line Sync series too, yeah. which I'm a big fan of. Uh, plus uh, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Yes. It's got all of that stuff available for, uh, as well. Interestingly, what's coming to compete with this vehicle for Truck of the Year for 2020? It's going to be the Jeep. Gladiator. Gladiator and four-door pickup bed. It's not going to be as quiet sounding internally, most likely, no. but it will have a manual option and it will have diesel. And that we're getting from internals. So if they're going to do both, they're saying, fine, Tacoma, you can have your manual and Colorado can have your diesel. You can get both in Jeep. And I'm surprised they're now offering one or the other in Ford. They got to offer diesel. I mean, people that are using these trucks are using them for towing. Well, you know, it's the U.S. spec too. So let's right. see. let's see what they sell in other parts of the world other parts of the world well, look, let's let's do this let's let's uh let me drive and up to yeah you should drive and then we're going to take a look at all of the uh, schnitzy stuff that we can do in terms of capability when we get to lunch as far as the vehicle itself i like the grippy wheel it's definitely more i hate to use this word in today's age but it's more masculine it's a grippy wheel and i think that's i'm triggered you're triggered uh sorry if you're triggered but I think one of the key things of having a wheel that you're getting a grip for is you're driving a truck. There is plenty of torque in this puppy. I mean, if you look at the specifications, and it really does have pulling capacity. 7,500 pounds, which is more than the competitors and more payload than they have as well. But as far as seating comfort, the seats are great. Lumbar on both sides. So yeah, they're great over here too. Double thumbs I'm up. I'm surprised. But this is not a loaded truck. This truck's coming in at 27,000 and nobody's paying retail on these vehicles. Maybe initially. It starts at 27,000. This one that we're in is at about 34. A fuel economy is coming in combined at 23, which is best in class. And, and this is with a gas engine. So this is equivalent to the diesel of the Colorado, which I find interesting. So as you move from the gauges, which are real gauges in front of you in the center stack, I like them, the real gauges, people that own these trucks put hundreds of thousands of miles on them. So you want real gauges. This is where you don't want digital gauges because if they fail, it's expensive and it may cost as much as what the truck's resale value is. Going to your center screen, there's a standard 4.3 inch screen. You can upgrade to the eight inch screen, which I think is gonna be standard on the higher trim levels. Going for the down, all your climate controls, pretty standard, easy to use. Two 12 volt outlets, much appreciated two USB smart outlets, which means they're high speed charging. Another bin, uh, you can shut that auto off off, which is the first thing we did we got in the vehicle is shut that damn auto off technology off. Then you further down, you've got some of your parking controls is for trailer backup, cameras, two big cup holders, nice center console, and then in the super cab here, there's not much room in back. Uh, I would say good for a dog, a set of clubs, some gear, maybe some little kids, but for the most part, it's pretty tight back there. So if you're gonna be carrying four people or five people on a regular basis, crew cab's the way to go. Remember, if you go with crew cab, you get the shorter bed. You go with super cab like we have here, you get the longer bed of six feet. So the difference is only a foot. 
it may make a difference to you or it might not. You know, we promised you that we'd give you some background information from one of the internal folks at Ford, and Brian Bell serves that role from the marketing department there. And nobody knows these things better than they do. So why don't we turn him loose for a couple of minutes here and give you a little insight. So, so Ranger actually has three series, XL, XLT, and Lariat. Think of it as base, mid, and high. If you're looking for that kind of more basic work truck with a little less content in it, you'd want that XL. Our XLT will be the volume vehicle. Uh, cloth seats, well-appointed, well-equipped. It has the eight-inch touchscreen available in it uh, for those folks who like that. And then you can go up to our Lariat, which is our highest model. It has uh, leather seating, power seats, uh, dual zone climate control, a lot of great, uh, a lot of great features in it. All three of the series come with things like our uh, uh, automatic emergency braking system uh, and our, uh, our, our Wi-Fi modem hotspot. Um, but then uh, again, we separate from there. If you're really looking for something that's capable off-road, our FX4 package is gonna give you that big bash plate up front. It's gonna give you um, uh, some great features like uh, our terrain management system, our trail control system, uh, puts in electronic locking rear axle. So really, really functional things. They're really gonna help you go out and get off-road and get to those uh, great spots. And then the second thing we're really excited about is our new partnership on accessories. So we're partnered with Yakima now, a great American company from Yakima, Washington. We've got a great accessory store. We've got a vehicle here actually showing it, but uh, working with Yakima, you're gonna be able to outfit this truck right at your dealer, Put all those uh, things right in your deal, finance it if you want to, and you'll be ready to go out on your adventure right off the showroom floor. So what does this button do? That is the trail control button. So trail control is basically a low speed cruise control that takes over both the throttle and the brake for you. So all you have to do is steer when you're going over rough terrain, when you're going uphill, when you're going down a steep downhill. It just takes over for you. Terrain management is, is allows you to select different modes in which the vehicle is going to operate. We have three different modes in addition to normal. You have grass, gravel, snow for your low muse situations, your icy, slippery cases. You've got mud and ruts mode, and then you have sand mode. And in these modes, the basically we're adjusting the powertrain features so that when you get into different throttle responses and different shift points of the, of the transmission as well as different intervention points of the traction control system so that you're able to manage different terrains better. All of that stuff on, on the new Ranger, it was a lot to digest. Right. Uh, all the details are down below yeah. and links of course. And, and there's no way that we can put all of this stuff into the video. So take a look down there yeah. and you'll see all of that stuff. Please comment. We, yes. we love your comments and we love uh, interacting with you too. Yeah, absolutely. And if you want to check out some of our most recent videos, just click right up there. And of course, if you'd like to see what YouTube suggests, down here. There. And where do we subscribe? Right over there. All right. Thank you so much for watching.